This video is going to show you how to win Catan. Catan is a well-balanced resource management game, and managing these resources properly is required to win. First, this video is going to show you which resources pair best with which. Next, we'll look at one of the most important facets of the game, your initial placement. Then, based off your resource strategy, how to implement that strategy. And finally, each strategy will get you seven or eight of the required 10 victory points so we'll look at how to get those last few points so you can get the win. If you gain value from this video, give it a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And write a comment about anything. YouTube likes that too. And if you want to help the channel grow, hit subscribe. If this video brings in over a thousand new subscribers, I'll make a video on whichever expansion set is asked for most in the comments. First, we're going to look at resource strategy. But before we do that, it's going to make sense to know what we can do with those resources, as this will play a determining factor as to why we do what we do. There are only four different things you can buy in Catan. A road, settlement, city, and development card. The game comes with brilliant checks and balances, so you should have a general game plan in what you're trying to accomplish. There are dozens, if not hundreds of strategies, but we'll closely look at the main four that provide viable paths to victory. The first is the balance strategy. Catan requires all the resources to win, so this strategy involves getting access to all the resources right out of the gate. While this makes sense at first, bear in mind, everyone else wants those resources too. Since everyone wants settlements where the odds of getting resources is high, if you're hellbent on having access to all five resources out of the gate, you might have to settle for some less than optimal locations, which might rear its ugly head as the game progresses. The second strategy is the wood brick or road building strategy. This is pretty straightforward. You want to build roads, so you prioritize wood and brick. This strategy will get you moving quickly and be able to expand to preferable spots on the map or cut others off from expansion while working towards the longest road bonus in the end. While you may be agile and expand fast, development will be difficult. At minimum, you'll also need wheat and sheep to build settlements as you expand, but the linchpin can be ore. It's impossible to win Catan without ore, so having a strategy without it can become challenging late in the game. The third strategy is the ore-wheat strategy. Ore and wheat is required for cities, so the strategy involves getting lots of ore and wheat early, developing into cities and reaping the rewards of extra resources. These prime locations, however, are going to be the target of every other player with the robber. As you are already heavy with ore and wheat, you can also supplement sheep into the mix to purchase development cards. The knights you get from the cards will play an important role in keeping your prime city spaces clear of the robber, and the largest army and victory point cards can put you over the top. The shortcoming is you'll lack mobility, and if you can't get favorable trades for wood or brick, you can find yourself stuck or paying exorbitant trade prices for wood and brick if you don't have a port. And speaking of ports, the fourth strategy is the port strategy, which involves going heavy on one or two resources and then trading them at the ports. This is similar to a monopoly strategy where you try to cut everyone off from a resource and force trading However, doing that without a port is asking for trouble. The positives with port is you can get exactly what you want without relying on others for a trade. The downside is it can be very slow, and not only does it take two resources for every one resource you want, but you also are starting with less hexes producing resources for you early on if you started with that port. And early on is the most critical time of the game, and this is determined from your initial placement. The way you choose your initial placement will be the biggest factor in how the game plays out for you. Catan uses two six-sided dice, so probabilities in the game stem from odds out of 36, making 7 and rolls closer to 7 having highest odds and rolls furthest from 7 having lowest odds. Klaus Tuber, the inventor of Catan, assumes your intelligence and gives you these odds right from the get-go. Each number token has pips. and these aren't random, they're the odds out of 36 that that number is rolled. Though the robber doesn't have his own pips, if he did, he'd have 6. Therefore, we want to maximize our odds. Numbers like 6 and 8 are red for this reason, they're the prime spots. 
but you don't need them for a good initial spot. Depending on resource type, pairings like 5 and 9 can be very powerful. Easiest rule of thumb is to pick spots with the highest pips. However, everyone else is fighting for prime real estate as well, so picking a spot in line with your strategy is more important than a few extra pips. However, don't pick bad spots. If you want ore and wheat, don't pick an 11 and 12 spot to get it. You're better off with a better spot in trading. Also, that being said, your resource strategy might change depending on other players' picks. Let's say you pick fourth, and your plan is an ore wheat strategy. If all three other players scoop up the best ore and wheat spots, but prime wood and brick spots remain, you may want to switch gears and own the wood and brick of the board and pick up the ore and wheat later as you develop. Most importantly, you want to maximize your odds. This also goes for your initial road. Your initial road is one of the best freebies in the game as it can quickly get you to your next settlement. It can also be badly squandered. As you place, be thinking of what you want it developing to. Or in other words, be anticipating what settlement you're going to build from it. The center of the board will be hotly contested, so unless if you have a strong chance to get a settlement first, you want to point your road to the outside. Even better, if you're on the cusp of a favorable port. Since the board is random, you may or may not have quick access to a favorable port. Having an awareness of what you do and don't have access to is an important part of your strategy. Once you've made your initial placement, you're locked into that strategy, at least at the onset. As the game develops, your strategy may change some, but your best producing tiles will likely be the ones from the initial placement. If you're going with the balance strategy, you'll kind of be hunting and pecking at the next best thing. With this strategy, you're going to be looking for what makes sense next. This can kind of leave you like a leaf in the wind because you may or may not have a clear path ahead of you, but more likely than not, the key to you winning will be to attempt to get more resources fast, whether that be from additional settlements or cities. Targeting development cards in the first few rounds might leave too much up to chance. For wood brick, You'll want roads ASAP. Don't be afraid to be aggressive and beat others to the punch. You'll want longest road in the end, but early on you just want to spread settlements. You'll need some, although not a lot, of wheat and sheep to do this. If you can pick up initial spots from these, even if they carry three or less pips, they can give you the little nudge to get the initial settlements up. However, without ore, you'll be stuck at seven victory points. You may be able to get a victory point card or even two from buying development cards, but likely you'll need a few cities to get those victory points, which might require a good port or some good haggling skills to get all of the ore you'll need. For ore wheat, you'll want cities ASAP. Your resource production skyrockets with cities, so the sooner you get them up, the more resources you have to build and trade with. And most importantly, if you have high wheat, ore, and sheep production, you can buy development cards in mass. Buying one or two development cards can maybe make you lucky, but buying a bulk of them will provide reliable results. Since night cards make up about half of the deck, it stands to reason roughly half of your development cards will be them. Therefore, on average, if you want three night cards for biggest army, you'll likely need six development cards. The other three cards will likely be either one victory point card and two progress cards, or two victory point cards and one progress card. All of these outcomes are fine. Biggest hurdle is getting the three brick and three wood to get your next settlement established. And if you have a port strategy, it goes without saying, get as many settlements on your good trading resource as you can. Be cautious though, if you overdevelop these spots and don't have night cards, the robber may stymie you. It's easy to look at a resource like sheep and just dig into it with the sheep port, but remember, while a two to one port is extremely advantageous, it's also expensive to develop. For example, by trading, a development card is five sheep or wheat and six brick or wood. You may have all the wood in the world with a beautiful port, but three development cards will cost you 18 wood versus nine total wheat or sheep. The wood brick and ore wheat strategies 
will likely go faster than the balanced or port strategies. They each is going to reach a tricky stopping point around seven or eight victory points. You're also going to find that no one is going to want to trade with you at this point either, just like you shouldn't trade with someone else getting close to 10 victory points themselves. So let's look at how to get ourselves to the mark. For the balance strategy, your path to victory involves focusing on increasing production early and then using those resources to either build a settlement or city next, whichever one is easiest. The late game struggles won't be as bad. You might just be the last one to get there though. Your breakdown is simply going to look like this. If you have a chance at longest road, you need two cities minimum and preferably three, and then two to four settlements depending on cities. Cities are expensive, but require less roads. You aren't likely to have both victory point cards and longest road, but if you have one victory point card, you need three cities. If you have two victory point cards, you can get by with just two cities. For wood brick, five settlements in longest road is seven victory points. This means you need ore. The points have to come from somewhere. You're facing an uphill battle for largest army, and you have one in five odds for a victory point card, which is five ore for five cards. For six ore, you can get yourself two cities. Your plan of attack is to try and trade or steal enough ore for a prime location city and also get a port, even if it's three to one. As you expand, if ore is becoming easier, continue with cities or development cards, whichever one is closer in the moment. If you have three ore, go for cities. If just one, hunt development cards. If you get a victory point card, you know your job just got easier. Beware of holding too many resources though. Let's say you have a two to one brick port and you're sitting with two wheat and six brick ready to turn it into ore and build a city. The robber can shut down those plans quick. So be aware of where you're at in relation to eight resources or only hoard resources when you know your plans require half or less of the resources in your hand to implement. Ore wheat should play out like this. Build cities quick to reap the rewards of the extra resources, then buy development cards. Hopefully you aren't competing with another ore wheat player for the cards, but assume two cards for every knight and assume you plan for largest army. Your largest uphill battle is getting enough wood and brick for your third settlement. Three cities, largest army, and two victory point cards is the win. It is possible to get a road building card and a year of plenty card and never actually acquire any wood or brick, but assume you'll need three wood and three brick in addition to the city card buying strategy you'll be using. And then for port, it depends a little on your port resource and take advantage of as many one-to-one -one trades as you can, but your heavy lifting comes earlier on as you spend heavy to get cities on your money maker hexes and then expand. Wheat can be a valuable resource to trade with others since everyone needs it as you're bulking up on a low demand resource like sheep to trade with a sheep port. Once you reach the late stage of the game, if your key resource is coming in droves, it doesn't matter if you build on the coast, there's not a lot anyone else can do to stop you. Just diversify your primary resource hexes so that one robber doesn't stop you dead in your tracks. So let's recap. First, understand the resource strategies so that you know what you need to be doing and know what your opponents are doing. Next, take your initial placement seriously. Settle in places with strong dice odds and point your roads to places easy to settle next. Then, even if it wasn't the strategy you went into the game with, use your strategy from your initial placement and stick to it to get your first seven to eight points, and then use your secondary strategy to get the last two to three points. Worth noting, you can work on your secondary strategy while you're working on your primary strategy. That's how you win Catan. If you gain value from this video, give it a like. This channel has videos for how to win other games. If you'd like a game covered, write it in the comments. Subscribe if you want an expansion video, and thank you for watching.